Hello, Bofiles! I hope you're having a great day. I know I am, because I just got a package. And the package contains the vocals that I ordered to try out. Uh, there are six vocals, they are Hineker vocals, and I thought it'd be cool to let you listen to them and kind of hear the difference. I'm going to walk you through my vocal issues. But first, let me get my English horn out, let me get the package opened, and let me get my reed soaked up so we can try out these English horn vocals. Um, there's different kinds with different measurements. So I didn't know anything about Hineker vocals before, um, and if you're watching this video to kind of see if you're interested in buying one, I'll give you kind of a quick run through on what these numbers mean. But first, don't forget to subscribe below so you can get more Oboe Files content, and hit that bell notification so you don't miss another Oboe Files video. So the English horn uses a vocal up at the top. It's just this long metal tube and some cork at the bottom. It kind of acts like the staple extension for where the oboe reed would have like the cork. Um, but the English horn reed sits on, on top there at the top of this little crook. Just like on the bassoon, it uses the vocal. And the vocal can have like um, slight variations uh, slight micro variations, I'd say, that affect the response, the sound, the timbre, um, intonation, all of it. So I've been using this Loray 2H, which came with the English horn, and it was okay, but I've always kind of struggled with intonation with it, and I didn't really know why. Uh, so I thought it was my reeds, but I took it to a couple teachers and professional players who thought the reeds were pretty good, and one of them who is an English horn player thought that the vocal might be an issue. So he gave me a vocal to try out, which was a Puchner vocal, which looks like this. Pretty cool, actually, like long chamber right there. And a lot of the problems just magically went away. So it's definitely the vocal. But I have to give this one back, because it's not mine. So I'm in the market for one. Uh, so I'm going to try these Hineker vocals, which are supposed to be pretty good. And there's lots of different measurements for them. So first, let's hear what it sounds like on the old vocal. Uh, which is the 2H, and then the Puchner vocal, which I'm borrowing. So tell me if you can hear the difference. So there is a test that an English horn player for a major symphony told me when you're trying out vocals, and that is to play a 1 and 1 C and diminuendo, and if you can get soft on it without it going flat, that's a good vocal. That's the bare minimum. So if the vocal starts to go flat on that C, you just got to throw it out. It just won't work for you. So this one... Okay, so that's the 2H. Feels okay. I um, feel like the sound is a little spready on it. But let's compare that to the Puchner vocal that I've been using for the last 
couple days, you know, actually like almost a week. So first the C. So it's quite a bit lower. Let me make sure it's in all the way. Okay. Okay. Oh, so I had a incident my freshman year, second semester in, in college, and I um, I was playing the Saint-Saëns Organ Concerto, the Third Symphony. Sorry, the Saint-Saëns Organ Symphony, the Third Symphony, and I was playing English horn, and we were just about to play the concert, and we are just kind of, you know, noodling around, and I was super flat, and I was freaking out because I didn't know what to do, I didn't have my retools, and so I asked the principal oboe, who was Trevor Mowry, who plays in the uh, President's Own now, which is... Awesome, he's a great oboe player. And I'm like, what do I do? He's a few years older than me, so I thought he'd know what to do. And he takes the horn, he plays it, and then he pushes the vocal in the rest of the way. So uh, always make sure that you press the vocal in all the way so that you're not just suddenly flat on everything. So I just feel like the center of gravity on this vocal is a little bit lower and the sound is a little bit more open as a result. Definitely, I like the timbre a lot more, but let me know what you think in the comments. So that's the second um, vocal, and that was the Puchner, which has that interesting shape. Um, but this is the one I have to give it back, so I can't keep it. And now we're going to try the Hindercker vocals. Now there are six, so I'll give you a rundown of what they are. There's three numbers for each of them. The first number for all of them for these is two. So I, I imagine the one is just like a skinnier vocal, maybe it's pitched higher, I'm not sure. But these are all two for the first number. The second number, I think, is like the volume inside the curve. So these are going to be either 11, 12, or B11. And um, I think the B is just like a different, slightly different shape. And the last number is 11 or 12, and it's how long the tip part is. And that's just how far does it stick into the reed. And that actually can affect the pitch a lot. So we've got a 2-11-11, we have two 2-12-11s, uh, and we have one 2-11-12, and then we have a 2-B-11-11, and a 2-B-11-12. And so you can follow along on the list up here, and kind of see which ones you think sound the best, and do the best job, and I'll kind of comment on what I think I like as well. So first I'm going to try the 2-11-11. So start with like the lowest numbers. So 2-11-11. Got that read. All right, so first test, remember, is we're going to try the C. And if the C drops in pitch with the diminuendo, then it's no good. Okay, so pass the test. Let's try some excerpts. Let's try scale first.
to voice that D up so much, and I don't know if that's the English horn or the vocal, but it seems to be kind of a common thing for me personally, so I need to get used to voicing that D up. Right, let's try. Um, the sound, I really like it. It feels really easy to play. It's very full. Um, I actually like the pitch a lot too. So that's the 211.11. And now let's try the 212.11. Now, I'm not sure the vocals are completely new, but the, uh, the quirks certainly are. So I might have to grease this up if it's becomes an issue. I don't want to press too hard. Yeah, okay, that's all the way in. Good. Okay, so this one is longer on the body, I think. I think that's the 12 instead of 11 part. <laughs> So I'm trying to voice it up, but no matter what I do, it seems to go flat on the C. So I guess let's not even try the rest of the vocal. Um, let's see kind of what happens with the other. Luckily, we have two of those. So we got two, two 12 11s. So we'll try the second one. Oh, it feels pretty good. So this one does work. The C does not go flat, so that's good. It's really up to pitch. That's nice. Um, I think the tone is pretty good. I'm not sure if I like it better than the, what was it, 211.11. That feels pretty good. Actually, kind of like that one. Um, I'm not sure which one I like better between this one and the 12, sorry, 2 11 11. Um, okay, let's put another track. This is track two. All right, so now let's try the 
2, 11, 12. Now this one is longer just on the part that sticks into the reed. So I'm expecting it to be a little bit lower. Oh, it's actually pretty easy to put in. Good. I'm expecting it to be a little bit lower. Um, we'll see. So first the C test. Quite a bit lower there. are down to pitch, but everything else is kind of low too, and I feel like I'm a little bit saggy in the middle register here. That's not the bad. I'll have to listen back to see what the tamper changes is, because it feels really free-blowing, and that feels nice. listen back to hear what that sounds like but it does feel good so so far we've only disqualified one the next one is a 2b1112 so kind of like the one that we just tried but the b is a slightly different shape in the bore i think i'm not really sure what the hinnaker philosophy is on shapes but we will give it a try so here's the c test So passes. So I do feel like I'm voicing everything up, but it's not as flat as the other one, so that's good. Um, the tone, I'll have to listen back to it to hear. It does sound a little bit more mellow to me. focus as I was getting on the other ones uh, it might sound a little bit more like wide which is nice up close but I'm worried that I won't actually project anywhere um, so that's this one and finally we have the 2 B 11 11 so this one is slightly shorter in the tip than the previous one but still has that B shape so maybe this one will fix all those pitch issues so let's try the C test first Sure. I actually feel like it's getting sharper when I do menu ended, so let's try one more time. I think it's pretty good. Okay. It actually feels lower for some reason. Is this the right one? Yeah. So B1111. Okay.
right, so I also like the feel of this one. Um, I'll listen back to the sound. This one sounds more focused than the previous one, but I think I like the 21111 or the 21211 a little better. So let me go back and try those, and then I think I'll be able to make a selection between those two. And then maybe I'll practice on one of them and see how I feel at the end of it. Just those B11s, I feel like they're a little bit more exhausting um, as far as having to hold control over it. Actually, immediately I'm attracted to the timbre of that 211.11 a little bit more than the other ones. So that one might be, I'm going to switch this, make sure the New World Loud part works. that vocal it's got that richness and focus um i'm gonna try the other one that i liked to compare it to but that 21111 really kind of jumps out at me so if you hear a difference in that one let me know that i'm not crazy leave a comment below and of course like if you like these videos don't forget to subscribe and do the like thing um all right sag as much on this one. This was the 2-12-11. Okay, so I'm gonna practice on both of those vocals and see which one I like better between the two. Um, but you should let me know in the comments below which one you like better and which one sounds better to you so I can kinda get your opinion on it. Thanks a lot for watching, and when in doubt, play beautifully.